Hey, in this video, we're going to review bounced landings, specifically the different types of bounced landings. We'll do a quick review of the flight crew training manual, and we'll also review some recommended recovery techniques. A bounce landing is generally the result of a high rate of descent on touchdown, and it can be categorized into one of two different scenarios. Now, those scenarios are going to be either a high bounce or a low bounce. The high bounce is really the riskiest of the two as it can lead to a tail strike if they're not properly handled. And it's usually the result of a high sink rate at touchdown followed by a high angle of attack. We could also have a low bounce, and this scenario involves also a high sink rate, but to a lesser degree and generally a lower angle of attack throughout the scenario. Let's now take a quick review of the flight crew training manual. Now the FCTM says, if higher than idle thrust is maintained throughout the touchdown, if higher than idle thrust is maintained throughout the touchdown, the automatic speed brake deployment may be disabled even when the speed brakes are armed. Remember that we've got to have those stress levers at idle upon touchdown. This can result in a bounced landing. During the resultant bounce, if the thrust levers are then retarded to idle, the automatic speed brake deployment can occur. This results in a loss of lift and nose up pitching moment, which can result in a tail strike and or a hard landing on the subsequent touchdown. Now, I just want to reiterate here real quick that if we have a high sink rate when we hit both main gears and we touch and we end up bouncing, it is also possible that to soften, quote unquote, soften that second touch, we continue to pull uh, aft in an attempt to arrest sink rate and soften that landing, which could also lead to a tail strike. So now let's look at some recovery strategies here. And first, for the less risky of the two, the low bounce. Real simple, maintain pitch attitude primarily by reference outside, right? Assuming uh, you're looking out the window, look outside, maintain that pitch attitude. And there's really no need to add thrust for this low bounce recovery. The high bounce recovery is a little more involved and it includes the same as what we just saw, the maintaining of pitch attitude by looking outside. We will manually advance thrust levers to go around thrust. Remember that manual thrust advancement is going to be a lot faster than what the servo of the auto throttle is going to advance thrust. We verify that the speed brakes are retracted and we are certain not to retract flaps or gear until a positive rate of climb is established. Do not try to avoid a second touchdown. And this is part of why we don't want to change configuration because it actually may lead to a more aggressive second touchdown. It is possible and maybe even likely that you're going to have a second touchdown throughout this procedure that you are executing, but we don't want to try to avoid it. We want to just maintain that pitch attitude so as to not arrest the sink rate and inevitably lead to a potential higher risk of a tail strike. Finally, when we're safely airborne, we're going to continue with the normal go around procedure, which as you will remember, is nothing more than go around with toga selection and moving the flaps to 15, assuming a normal two engine go around. Hopefully you found this review useful of value and we look forward to seeing you here in future videos.